Hello and welcome to the 14th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the E4 circuit in Sweden. Now starting on the pole is Louis Ballard with Nicholas Cordovos on his inside. Pole sitter chose the outside to start the race. Gaspar D'Souza and Barney Ward in the second row. We've got Alina Lazerva and James Hewitt in the third row there. Uh, ben Atkins, Clay Gibson qualified in fourth place. He, com he participated in the PCC Europe race. Uh, championship competitor Christopher Loxanen was involved in an accident when he broke down. Uh, and uh, Leonid Chernov in the 61 had some mechanical issues which gave the win to Clara Kindall in the number two car. We should be seeing her in uh, the Vnukovo Airport race, which is the next race uh, that will be run for the PCC Cup Series. Uh, we're looking at about 130 cars right now showing up to that race between PCC Cup uh, Europe cars and some one-offs that have been entered. Uh, so that should be a very exciting race. Um, we'll be looking at uh, four tiered qualifiers once again uh, for that race as we've got the ROG Motorsports there uh, locking out row 15. And this is a uh, aerodynamic course uh, where some of the cars with uh, better aerodynamics will perform better in qualifying, and you can see that in qualifying. Uh, Cale Bernfart Jr. did not do so well, but he was fairly fast in practice. He was about 30th fastest in practice, and rounding out the last rows, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer and John Jefferson uh, at the back of the field. And with that, Louis Ballard leads the field to the green flag. Nicholas Cordovos on his inside. Uh, the looks like we've got four wide already in the back there between uh, the, that looks like Lazareva, two of the TBA cars, and Clay Gibson making a move on the inside there. Four wide for second place as Louis Ballard starts to distance himself away as Corodovos gets caught up in that mess back there. Uh, Corodovos trying to make a move on the inside with James Hewitt there. Uh, we've still got three and four wide in the back of the field as Clay Gibson starts to fall back now as Ballard, uh, Corodovos, Hewitt. And uh, that's Gaspar D'Souza in fourth place as they start to sort out through these first few turns. Uh, as look at Ballard starting to pull away just a little bit, and it looks like we've got uh, some, we've got a few cars in, uh, involved in an incident in the back there. Let's take a look at what happened here. Oh, looks like Tom Delgado got hooked by Brian Gallagher, got turned into the inside wall, and we've got chaos ensuing there, as we've got multiple cars. Oh my goodness, that's a car in the guardrail. Dan Foray involved as uh, looks like we've got a jam up there, going to go on board with uh, Ga um, Brian Gallagher as he just turned. Uh, Delgado there got into Sapphire Anderson. She goes into the inside wall. Greg Woodard's in it. Alex Phillips, Barbara Burt, Mark Burt, many cars involved as uh, Tom Wilson there has uh, gotten a piece of it as we're going to go on board with Daniel Sharp and uh, take a look further back and see what he saw as... Uh, Looks like he got into Kuka Hakai and sent him into the wall. That's a huge hit for Hakai. Kurt Pliskin spinning there. Uh, Kelly Blackwater got a piece of it. Bunch of cars involved early on. Uh, they're going to get that all sorted out. And now taking a look here, we've got Ben Atkins. He's going to collect Gaspar D'Souza there, and they're both going to go into the sand. Barney Ward and Ben Atkins. Uh, neither of them are going to be able to get out, and they're both going to have to get towed back to the pits and lose a couple laps in the process. Tough break for both of them. They were running very well and had qualified very well. Uh, Clay Gibson following right behind this. Uh, going to get three wide there, and he's going to get hooked into the outside wall uh, by Ike Durbin, and he's going to go out of the race very early on. Tough break for the Australian, who had a good qualifying effort as well. And, uh, oh, Alex Phillips just got spun by Brian Gallagher, who's on a trail of destruction here. Uh, from 20th place. Alex Phillips qualified in 24th, had a good run uh, going, and he's going to lose a couple positions, but keep it going in the right direction. Uh, looks like we've got a uh, spin up here. It looks like Brian Gallagher is going to get in contact with Ian Elias there, and they're both going to go off the track, and Brian Gallagher is going to get stuck in the sand trap. Uh, instant karma, I would say, is uh, he did cause two of the big accidents that happened early on between Alex Phillips and uh, that lap one incident. So I, you won't hear any sympathy from me as Tom Wilson battling with uh, Barbara Burt here. Uh, Tom Wilson already has a bit of damage. Barbara Burt's just going to turn him into the outside wall. They're both going to go in hard, and both are going to go out of the race on lap number two. Uh, both drivers were up in the top 20 when this happened as Louis Ballard starting to pull a bit of a gap over... Uh, Nicholas Corodovo's back there. 
Uh, Cordova is starting to fall into the clutches of James Hewitt as uh, Ike Durbin, your championship points leader, despite uh, wrecking a car early on. That was Clay Gibson. Uh, he is up to sixth place by lap number three. This is a 35 lap race. So he's doing his championship efforts a lot of good by staying up near the front. Uh, his nearest championship rival is Gaspar D'Souza, who is one spot ahead of him in fourth, in uh, fifth place. But he's got a bit of damage from uh, collisions with Ben Atkins and a couple other cars. So that might end up hampering him later in the going. Alina Lazareva in front of him having an excellent run as well. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza running in fifth place here. Uh, now with a lot of the attrition that's gone on, this has allowed quite a few cars uh, that we don't normally see at the front of the field to make their way up there. One of them is Josh Marshall, who's running in 8th place on lap number 4. And uh, Josh Marshall is the one driver uh, left that is running full time that has not scored a top 10. And this is looking like a golden opportunity for him to do so. Uh, Josh Marshall in the 18 car, he's been running this car consistently since 2011. Uh, hasn't really come close to a chance at victory since Road Atlanta in 2011. As it looks like Gaspar D'Souza has developed a problem. He's dropped way off the pace. He's already lost a couple positions to Ike Durbin and Ramsey Cockner there. And it uh, looks like Josh Marshall is going to get held up by him. And Ingrid Hadeland there in the 20 car who's also having a great run. Uh, yeah, there's definitely something wrong with that 12 car. Um, they haven't brought him into the pits yet, but... Uh, yeah, look how much time he's losing there. There's something definitely wrong. I think it's uh, that car dropped a cylinder at some point. He is uh, he's really struggling. Uh, still holding up Ingrid Hadeland, which he is allowed to do. Uh, he is allowed to defend his position, and he lets Hadeland go right there. As uh, here is uh, uh, John Jefferson, who's already lost a couple laps. He got stuck in the gravel trap on the first lap, and he's going to get stuck there again after bouncing off. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza, and when you're the slowest car on the track in qualifying and you're getting ready to pass Gaspar D'Souza, uh, that's not a good sign for that 12 car, but unfortunately, John Jefferson's going to lose even more laps in the pits. As here's Scott Wellen, who's really had an upturn in form since we've uh, showed up on the European circuits. He's done an impeccable job in this number 16 car, uh, almost single-handedly bringing Lucas Motorsports out of relegation. Uh, he's running up in ninth place as we reach the 1-5th mark in this race. Uh, Scott Wallen doing an excellent job up in the top 10. As James Hewitt now has already worked his way around uh, Nicholas Cordovos, he's put him in the dust, and he's focused his sights on Louis Ballard, who appears to be dealing with some lap traffic up ahead. Uh, but uh, James Hewitt is the fastest car on track currently, and is doing an excellent job trying to hunt down Louis Ballard, who seems to be struggling with some of the lap traffic that they're already starting to encounter up ahead. Uh, and this is uh, Andy Lambert, who's done a pretty good job here today. He had a good qualifying effort, and he's running in 10th uh, place on lap number 8. Uh, that is four position that uh, Akio Gifu behind him, and he's having a great run as well. Uh, but Andy Lambert, there was some speculation earlier in the season that he might bring his uh, operation up to the Cup Series, uh, Lambert Motorsports, but he has repeatedly told his team that no, there are no plans for him to do that. Uh, so let's see if Andy Lambert's a man of his word when the season comes to the end. Uh, if he can keep his team in the relegate or in the promotion spot to the PCC Cup Series. Here's the battle for 28th between Lewis Jones and Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, and that's going to end in tears. Uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer gets in the back of Jones, and they're both going to go into the gravel trap. They're both going to get stuck, and they're both going to lose a couple laps in the process, getting towed back to the pits. Tough break for both of them, especially Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, who's trying to. Uh, parachute his fall through the standings uh, as he is not very good on these road courses. Ingrid Hadeland has gotten around uh, Josh Marshall. She has really set a light under this uh, Matthews Motorsports team and uh, she's been consistently running in the top 10 on these road courses. Uh, we are expecting to see her in this 20 car for the rest of the uh, European Tour except for uh, the race at Euro Speedway Lausitz which uh, Alexa Lake will be in this 20 car. Once again, Frank Azzaretto having a good run. He's up in uh, 20th place or so, but he's reporting that he's dropped a cylinder now, too. Uh, sounds like it's about the same problem that Gaspar D'Souza is having right now because he has dropped quite a bit uh, down on pace. And that's uh, Preston Bell who's getting ready to pass him there for, I believe that's 21st position. And look behind there, that's Cale Burnfart Jr. up in 22nd. 
that just tells you the attrition rate that's uh, been going on in this race. As uh, Kale Bernfart Jr., I never thought I'd say that he's close to a top 20 on a road course, but uh, I guess he's really kept it quite clean. He dodged the first accident, got through that without a problem. Uh, looks like, oh, he's getting crowded a bit there by Frank Azzaretto. He's not going to be too happy about that, but he's going to work his way around or try to work his way around on the outside. Frank Azzaretto putting up quite a good fight on Cale Bernfart Jr., who, again, is not really known for his road course promise. He does have one road course win, which was the Tier 4 qualifier uh, for the Cleveland Grand Prix a few years ago, but uh, since then he hasn't really showed anything. Looks like he's going to get that pass pulled off here in the last turn and uh, chalk a position down for Cale Bernfart Jr. As, oh, it looks like we've got a problem with the leader. Uh, reporting a left front uh sorry right front tire going down on the eight car as oh yeah that car is way off the pace look how fast that james hewitt caught up there oh he's holding him up <laughs> uh despite the fact that the track is this wide james hewitt is choosing to stay behind louis Ballard for some reason uh louis Ballard definitely having some issues with that car the right front tire has gone down uh slowly deflating on that car and he's just trying to limp it back to the pits, but James Hewitt doesn't seem to be too keen on passing. Oh, there he goes on the outside coming into the hairpin, and James Hewitt is going to take the lead. Uh, ben Atkins there is two laps down at the moment, so that's not for position. Uh, but Louis Ballard is going to limp his way back to the pits. Tough break for the Bruneau winner, and you can see the gap that uh, James Hewitt's already pulled on second place Nicholas Corradovos. And James Hewitt... Uh, looking for his second win of the season uh, already. James Hewitt having an excellent run, and this will do wonders for his championship hopes as uh, he's been consistently running in the top 10 uh, in the championship here coming up to lap Kurt Pliskin. And, uh, take a look to see how long this pit stop takes for Louis Ballard. Yeah, uh, right side tires, they're going to change both of them, send him back out on his way. So Louis Ballard's not really going to lose a lot of time. I believe he's only going to drop down to about 8th place or so. So this really isn't too bad for Ballard. He still can rebound from this, but uh, I think a shot at him winning is uh, all but over at this point. And here's Nicholas Corradovos running in 2nd place. Uh, struggled getting around Ben Atkins there, understandably so, since uh, Atkins' teammate uh, Hewitt is leading. And that's Alina Lazareva in third place, but Nicholas Corradovos has really struggled this season. We haven't seen the domination that we've known from him in years past. Uh, he even DNQ'd a race earlier in the year at Mansfield. Uh, but Corradovos having a strong run, uh, trying to reverse the trend that we've seen from him uh, so far this season. And same thing with Kelly Blackwater, who at one point earlier this season looked like one of the main challengers for the title, uh, unexpectedly so as that is. Uh, to Ike Durbin, but uh, since the European Tour, she has free-fallen through the standings, uh, dropping outside the top 10. Uh, and Kelly Blackwater running 16th place now over, uh, that's Daniel Sharp behind her in 17th place, having another strong run. Uh, Daniel Sharp doing what he needs to do to stay up in the top 20 in points, but Kelly Blackwater trying to reverse her recent trend of free-falling through the standings. Uh, John Jefferson, oh, he's getting in the way. That's uh, He's blocking Louis Ballard, who is in a battle with Scott Wall in there, and Ballard has none of it and dumps him off the track. And that's going to be the end of the day for John Jefferson, who at this point has completed only 10 of the race's 16 laps. He's been stuck in the gravel trap twice, uh, gotten towed back to the pits twice, and that's going to be the end of the day for the 55 car, uh, who's had an absolutely miserable uh, trip into Europe. And we've got our first green flag pit stop with... Uh, Vinny Focasato here in 19th place, coming in on lap 16 of 35. Uh, good run going for Vinny so far. He hasn't really shown uh, too much speed, but uh, I guess he's bringing uh, important financial injections into this team, and I suppose it's better to be rich than good uh, in some respects. And here we've got Gaspar D'Souza, who's uh, already gone a lap down, uh, and he's getting ready to come into the pits. Looks like a bunch of the leaders are getting ready to come into the pits. There's Ike Durbin committing, Ramsey Cockner, and oh, looks like he blew the pit entrance, and he's going to hit the pit wall. What on earth was Gaspar D'Souza doing? I'm not sure why uh, he didn't pull into the pits. And here's Greg Woodard uh, running up in the top 10, just outside the top 10, and unfortunately his car is going to experience some mechanical difficulties. Uh, he was running in 12th place. That's Duncan Cobb right behind him. Uh, not sure why he hasn't passed him yet. Okay, there he goes. 
Uh, but Greg Woodard, a tough break for him. He was having a good run as well. And unfortunately, his team, which has been struggling in the championship, uh, is not going to look so good. James Hewitt skips on the pit lane this time. Uh, but it looks like most of the leaders have come in. Uh, Alina Lazareva we're following right now in the pit lane. Uh, looks like uh, Ramsey Cockiner is in. Uh, Josh Marshall, that's Scott Wallen in the background, is... Uh, looks like... Oh my goodness. Uh, Barry Juveno just blew up right as he passed the pit lane. Uh, tough break for Barry Juveno as he was running up in the top 20. He was in 18th place at the time. And that's really unfortunate because Juveno has had an absolutely miserable season. Uh, he was looking to have a good run here today, and unfortunately it's not going to pan out that way. He just... Uh, unfortunate for him. As uh, James Hewitt brings his car into the pits a lap later, lap 18 of 35, so it looks like he's going to try it on one stop. And Cordovos brings it in as well. Uh, trying to mimic him and keep him pinned on his strategy as we're going on board with Louis Ballard who is off cycle right now and there's James Hewitt coming out right in front of him as it looks like uh, Louis Ballard's gonna have a chance to reclaim the lead here if he can keep up his speed uh, dark skies I've noticed so a uh, threat of weather maybe uh, not seeing anything on the radar but it looks like uh, we've got some clear skies over here as a long, long stop for Nicholas Cordovo. He's going to come out of the pits in 8th place. Uh, so pit crew ruining Nicholas Cordovo's chances at a win here today. Uh, Cordovo's is furious over the radio right now. He, he can't believe what's happened. He was so close to the lead before and just his pit crew has blown it for him. So uh, Cordovo is still in the top 10, but oh my goodness, look at the ground that... Uh, Look at the ground that Louis Ballard's gained on uh, James Hewitt here. Has something gone wrong with Hewitt? Or is Ballard just that much faster? And uh, he's gained a couple seconds on him since we last... Oh, that's uh, Jerry Myatt slow on track. And uh, Ballard's going to take advantage of, of that and take the lead as Jerry Myatt has broken down on track. I um, think that's a terminal suspension issue on the Jerry Myatt car, but... Uh, Ballard has taken the lead, and uh, now again, Ballard is off cycle, and he's pulling quite a bit of gap there, but he's running a bit close to the pit lane, and oh, yep, there he goes. Uh, Ballard has committed to the pit lane, and he's going to hand the lead back to James Hewitt, not even leading a lap in the process. Uh, so, Ballard handing the lead, and basically the race over to James Hewitt. Now on a lighter note, here's Alex Phillips in 15th place, having a pretty strong run. Uh, he recover he's recovered pretty well after that spin that he had uh, very early on in the race. So it, this has been an up and down uh, year for Phillips. Three poles and his first career win, but multiple DNFs, and he's uh, not really where he should be in points in his own opinion. Uh, but a strong run here today, looking to uh, reverse that downward trend uh, in his point standing. Uh, here's uh, Josh Marshall up in the top five still doing an excellent job. He's in fifth place, still holding on over uh, Ramsey Cockiner back there. He's doing a great job here today. Uh, for a driver who hadn't had a top 10 all season, he's looking to get his first top 10 and top 5 here today. Uh, not too far behind Ike Durbin there, but he's just been running his own race and staying out of trouble, and that's really all he's needed to do all day uh, to stay where he is right now. Uh, Joe Craig and Ben Worthington running 21st and 22nd. And uh, these cars have been through hell today. <laughs> um, Joe Craig's car, that hood's pushed up, rear end is all smashed up, but he's still in 21st. And Worthington's been following him all day. And this is uh, great for them. Uh, two decent finishes, plus Scott Wallen, who's up near the top 10. Uh, and this will do wonders for their uh, battle in the promotion relegation struggle. They're last in the standings right now and uh, finishes like this are going to boost them up and keep them in the fight uh, to stay in the series next season. Alina Lazareva running in second place. Uh, about six seconds behind James Hewitt, so she hasn't really made up a ton of ground, but she's just close enough that if he spins off or something of the sort, uh, she will be able to pounce and take the lead. So Alina Lazareva staying hungry in second place. And here's Kelly Blackwater, who's running in 19th place, right behind... Oh, she's slowing down. Uh, I was going to say that she was doing a pretty decent job, but uh, 
looks like something's gone horribly wrong with that car, and this is going to take Kelly Blackwater out of the race, which uh, is something we've said a lot uh, during this European tour, unfortunately. Uh, Tom Delgado making a pass for 10th place. Oh, what's this? Tom Delgado in the top 10? Uh, I've, I've never said that before. Um, Tom Delgado leads the series in top 10s, and it looks like he's going to net himself another one here today as he got around uh, the 34 car there. And Tom Delgado, uh, I did mention he was only good for top 10s, and he seems to be proving me right uh, here today. Nicholas Cordova is making a move around, uh, that's Josh Marshall, and he got around uh, Ramsey Cockner there in one move. So Nicholas Cordova is up to uh, fourth place now. Uh, that was a mistake when I said earlier. Josh Marshall was actually in fourth, not fifth. Uh, but Corradovos is charging towards the front after that botched pit stop. He is uh, driving mad right now. Here's Alina Lazareva coming to lap her teammate uh, Brian Gallagher. Ben Atkins getting in the way. Oh, Gallagher. Gallagher, oh no, what did he do? He just uh, took his teammate into the gravel trap there uh, by refusing to get out of the way. And Alina Lazareva is going to get stuck in the gravel trap from second place. So, uh... I think PCC Cup Series officials are going to have to have a word with Brian Gallagher. Uh, he's been getting in the way quite a bit today. As we've got a battle here for 17th between Daniel Sharp and uh, Vinny Focasato. Oh, they're going to get together and they're both going to go into the gravel trap. Uh, Focasato keeps it going. See if he can't get back on track, but uh, Sharp is beached there in the gravel trap and he's going to lose a couple laps in the process. Uh, tough break for both of these drivers. They're looking at top 20 finishes on this road course, which uh, would be punching way above their weight. On the way back to the pits, uh, Focusado is going to run out of fuel coming out of the final turn, and uh, this is pretty dangerous, I think. Uh, going about 30 miles per hour on one of the fastest parts of the track, cars whizzing right by him, and... Uh, you better get that car off to the side of the road here soon. Uh, got leaders bearing down on him. I'm surprised uh, the 70 didn't hit him there. But it looks like he's just barely going to make it into the pits. And uh, creeping along. Oh, he's going to get some help from uh, Scott Wallen who needs to uh, tank up on fuel. He was going on a two-stop strategy. So Scott Wallen, who came in from 8th place, is going to sacrifice his position to help uh, Focus Auto get into the pits, uh, to get into his pit stall and get fueled up. So I guess chivalry isn't dead here, as uh, Scott Wollen is going to sacrifice a few uh, track positions to help out Focus Auto get to the finish of this one, as Ingrid Hadeland is uh, in the top 10, but she's slowing down now. Something's definitely wrong with that car. Uh, suspension problems are going to take Ingrid Hadland out of this race from 6th place. Uh, just a few laps from the finish, just uh, 7 laps to go right now, and Hadland is not going to make it to the finish, which is a heartbreak because she was having a fantastic run once again. Oh, we've got a car off there, but uh, Preston Bell is running up in 15th place, which means that Cale Bernfart Jr. is in 14th. Uh, both of these drivers are having excellent runs, and... Uh, well, they haven't really been anywhere near the top 30 on the road courses thus far, and that just tells you the attrition right here today, but these drivers have been holding their own all day, and it, it's been a pretty good showing for both of them. Uh, both drivers needed really good runs here today. And here the battle for second place is heated up as Corradovos has caught Ike Durbin, and he is breathing down his neck. Uh, Corradovos is much faster than, oh, goodness me, Preston Bell. Uh, almost got in the way of Ike Durbin there. Well, he, he did, but uh, Durbin's going to put Bell between himself and Corradovos, and uh, this is one of the greatest drives I've seen from Corradovos in a while. He's made up quite a bit of time, and Ike Durbin is doing all he can to keep him behind him, as, uh, oh, Dan Foray's going to get in the way, and Dan Foray's going to get hooked off the track. The 96 car is done for the day after that hit, and... Uh, I think Cordova's managed to get around Durbin in the process. As yeah, Durbin slid off track, and Cordova's is going to take the inside and take over the second position. So Nicholas Cordova's is having an excellent run. Let's see if he can't catch uh, James Hewitt here. Now we've got a battle for fifth place. 
Oh! Cockiner just turned Josh Marshall there. He's going to slide through the uh, gravel trap, and he's going to get back on track. Uh, that was a perfect spin. A uh, bit unnecessary, quite a bit unnecessary from Ramsey Cockiner, but uh, Josh Marshall's going to continue on in sixth place. He only lost two positions in that ordeal. That was a battle for... Uh, I believe that was for fourth place, fourth or fifth place. However, James Hewitt, unchallenged at the front of the field. Uh, Corey Dovos would not catch him, and James Hewitt would take his second win of the season at the E4 circuit here today. Taking a look at the results now, Ike Durbin managed to hang on to finish in third place, Ramsey Cockiner in fourth after spinning Josh Marshall. Louis Ballard in fifth place, Josh Marshall gets his first top ten of the season, and nearly top five, with a sixth place run, Tom Delgado, good for only top tens I guess, another seventh place for the three car, and he continues to lead the series in top tens, Andy Lambert has a great run in eighth place. Mark Burt didn't talk about him all day, he managed to sneak into ninth place, and Duncan Cobb Rounds out the top 10 in the 79 car. Uh, your second place finisher and nearly winner at Road America. Akio Gifu in 11th place had a good run. Didn't talk about him much. Scott Wollin sacrificed an 8th place finish to push Vinny Focasato into, into his pit stall. Vinny would finish the race uh, in that double zero car in 23rd. Alex Phillips in 13th. Preston Bell and Cale Bernfart Jr. come out of nowhere. Didn't really expect to see them anywhere near the top 20 at all. To finish 14th and 15th. Worthington and Craig finished 16th and 17th. Ryan Matthews was missing a hood. Uh, he lost his hood in lap one uh, crash, but managed to stay out of trouble after that and finished 18th place. Ian Elias had his issues today. And uh, Ben Atkins, after getting beached in the sand early on, uh, comes back to finish two laps down in 20th place. And now looking at the points, Ike Durbin continues to hold a one race lead barely over James Hewitt now in second place after that second win of his. Uh, Tom Delgado vaults up to third place in the standings uh, on account of, I believe, eight top tens in 14 races this season. Uh, Brian Gallagher in fourth. Uh, that position is tentative, and I think uh, PCC Cup Series officials are going to have to have a word with him after causing repeated incidents today. Gaspar D'Souza had a rough run and dropped down to fifth place in the standings. Ben Atkins in sixth. Uh, Louis Ballard, 7th place after his good run today, despite what could have been a win. Nicholas Cordova is back up in the top 10 for the first time in a long time. Uh, Ian Elias in ninth place. Mark Burt continuing a strong rookie run in 10th place. He actually vaulted over Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer for that, uh, who dropped to 11th. Uh, Duncan Cobb in 12th place, being very consistent, uh, tied with his teammate for that position. Andy Lambert and Sapphire Anderson tied for 13th. Barbara Burt, 15th place, didn't have a great run today. Uh, Josh Marshall in 16th, uh, got his first top 10 and is up in the top 20 in points. Akio Gifu in 17th, Kelly Blackwater free-falling through the standing sound to 18th, Daniel Sharp in 19th, and John Jefferson, another driver who's free-falling, he was up in the top 10 in points uh, after Mansfield, is now down to 20th. He's really struggled this European Tour. And taking a look at the team standings, the only changes are that Nicecock Racing has passed place in Enterprises for 7th in the team standings. And Lucas Motorsports has jumped from last to 12th over Accelerator and Steffens. Uh, only 31 points back from that all-important uh, 11th place, which is being held by Matthews Motorsports team. Uh, they get up there and they are safe until next season. Uh, next race of the season is at the Vnukovo Airport in Russia. This is the second overcapacity race of the season, and uh, we're looking at at least 130 cars there. So I'll see you there next time.